Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to bend acrylic. Uh, partially because I'm rather bad at it, uh, but also because of the type of acrylic I use. It is a higher end variety and it is a little bit harder than the standard fare that you can get out there. And also, and most importantly, it has rather thick walls. I mean, I need that for the machining. Acrylic doesn't machine well, so I need uh, every advantage I can get. And the thicker wall and a slightly harder acrylic uh, is very good for that. Now, the only way to get harder acrylic is to go up to cast, um, but that's a lot more expensive, and I didn't feel it justified the cost. So, this is what I use, and I, currently it's what I have available, so I'm going to give an attempt at bending this <laughs> thicker stuff. To that end, what I've done is I machined two aluminum in end caps there. They're going to snugly fit inside. And I have a crucible here. Well, actually what it is is uh, my mortar and pestle, but it, it can take heat. So I've got some sand. Uh, it's not hot at the moment, by the way. I'm, I figured before I got around to heating up the sand and uh, getting all set for that, I thought I would do a couple dry runs, uh, get everything all, all the, you know, the kinks out, make sure I knew uh, where everything was going to go and how it was all going to work before I was dealing with sand at, uh, I think I put it up to 350 degrees. So this is my dry run. And the sand, what it does is, in this case, two things. It's going to prevent the, hopefully, uh, the acrylic tube from kinking because it's going to want to do that, especially the thicker walled stuff. And the other thing it's going to do is it's going to heat it from the inside and I'm going to also heat it from the outside. And the outside is going to be handled by my uh, hot air gun. So there you go, the sand is hot now. You can see it's also a lot drier. Uh, you probably should wear gloves doing this, guys, but uh, I find it's easier to manipulate things with my fingers. I will uh, have a glove a little later on when I have to get closer to the hot end. Uh, but while working up here at this end, it's, it's actually quite fine. This stuff is really thick. <laughs> And it does uh, take quite some time to heat up, as this video is going to show you. Now, so that sand is at 350. Well, it's probably cooled off to around about 300 now. And the air gun, I'm uh, the air it's cranking out is says that, well, it says it's at 400 degrees. And the rest of this segment here, which is going to be even time, uh, even when it's uh, sped up by 400 percent. It's going to take about three or four minutes, and that's how long it took for me to bend this with both of those <laughs> things working out, heating it from the inside and the outside. And all told, without you know the speeding up of the video, uh, this would have been about a 20 minute process, and that in itself makes it that I probably won't want to do this. It would have to be a really um, big increase in filtration something uh, to warrant all this extra time now there are some disadvantages to having bent oh, you see it's just starting to get a little uh, softer now and there are disadvantages to having an elbow of this style I mean everything I've done so far I do for ease of maintenance and the caps I make the 90 degree ones uh, that pop off and I can remove everything and brush everything out it makes it really easy to clean and the sweeping elbow like this uh, has like definitely as we get a little later on when I show you how I'm gonna have to hook this up uh, it is harder to clean and also because you don't want to have anything going down the center of the tube and obviously ruining the fact that you have this nice sweeping elbow it has to be um, like machining for getting the air to it. it has to be from the other side and that in itself is also a little bit of a you know a stri strike against it, whatever you want to call it. It just makes maintenance a little bit more difficult. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm a lazy guy. I like to have uh, my maintenance uh, very easy to get to, very easy to work with. And anything that uh, results in me having to do extra work, uh, it just doesn't make it worthwhile. Unless, of course, it gives me some sort of perk that the other ones don't. So the end result of all this is, is I'm going to uh, bend this eventually and then I'm going to hook it up to a box filter. 
And I'm going to run that on one of my aquariums for, well, for quite some time, I suspect. Because I want to see if all my uh, considerations and worries or whatever you want to call them for the maintenance of this are justified. So I'm going to give it uh, a full run. I'm going to hook it up and show you how it works uh, today. It's not going to actually go on the tank that I'm going to show you. Uh, because uh, that's actually a really clean tank. And I'm gonna pick one of my dirtier ones, probably one that has plecos in it or something, and run it on that, and we'll put it through its paces. Make sure that, uh, like I said, that this is worth doing. So we're getting close to the end now. It's almost at 90. Uh, this has been 20 minutes of me trying to get this thing heated, and the problem with it is you have to keep rotating, you have to keep moving around, and it's just difficult to make sure that the acrylic stays uh, uniformly heated from all sides. So I went and dipped that into some cold water, or actually it was just one of my tanks, and uh, you can see I lost a little bit of the 90 there, but uh, not enough to be of any concern. So I'm going to just tap this out, pull the end cap off, and we're going to have a look at it here. That sand has cooled off quite a bit, but it's probably still a little bit too hot to touch by fingers. Wow. Just trying to be safe here. So as you can see, I only used one of the end caps. Uh, it just didn't seem necessary to pop the other one on as well. So I'm going to uh, blow that out, and then I'm going to rinse it out with a bit of water. And the nice thing about this, the process, I mean, I suppose if it were thinner walled and a softer acrylic, it would have been much easier to do. But you can see it did actually produce, uh, <laughs> the other downside is the sand, uh, it did produce a nice elbow. And... That's actually kind of cool. I do like that. But this, the old the other one I did here and this one here, uh, you can see how it would be difficult to get uh, anything to clean that in there. And again, as I said earlier, any kind of, uh, well, any way I can add air to this, uh, the best way is obviously from the outside. So this is the box filter. This is one of the ones I made a while back. Uh, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to use it for. And this sounds like a perfectly good uh, way to do this. So I'm going to pop a hole in the side of this and then I need to change the lid a little bit. Uh, I First off, I uh, ran through a, a larger drill bit just to make sure that it was uh, it was loose fitting enough that it didn't have any you know issues with that binding. And the other thing I'm going to do here is I need to put a little bit of uh, a notch in this. I'm just going to run a um, and then mill through it just to uh, a place for the pipe to go. And that's pretty much all I have to do to alter this. Now obviously if I uh, were to design the box filter solely for this, I might do it a little bit differently. Uh, but this is pretty much what I have to work with and I didn't want to uh, go making a whole uh, new system for this for the moment. Because all I want to do is test this out and make sure it works. So there you go. There's the notch and now it's just a simple matter of assembling this whole thing and putting it in an aquarium. So the box filter, like I said, is standard. I've already uh, did videos for that. Uh, I, all I did is I took a piece of quarter inch here and uh, machined it with a bit of a, an elbow on it. And I'm going to just put that in. And uh, unfortunately, the other thing I need to do is to keep it secure as I have to use uh, zip ties. Now, that's not really a big deal, I suppose, but again, it just makes it a little bit more difficult for maintenance on this. Now, if I, you know, if, I, if this turns out to be something that's uh, really good, like something I'm really happy with, uh, I mean, it gives enough extra filtration to warrant all the extra work, uh, then I can go to some extreme of uh, machining this so that it doesn't have twist ties. I can build a bracket or whatever uh, to hold everything in place uh, without having you know the unsightly aspect of this happening to it but that is all only if this works out really well so I'm gonna make it just for the moment I'm gonna just zip tie this on here uh, snug it all up so it's in place and it's not gonna move around and then loading this up with filter media is also another bit of an issue because you can see uh, with the the pipe there with the airline pipe in the position it's in the lid really doesn't come off anymore now i could um take uh, well take the end mill and widen that even more but i didn't want to i didn't want i wanted to give this a chance to work really well 
and the more of a gap anywhere, uh, less water is going to go where you want it to, and obviously just take the path of least resistance. So, uh, again, that's just another thing you have to consider when doing this. So I'm just going to snug that down now. Uh, obviously I put the zip tie on too high, but I wanted it to be up close to the lid, so uh, that just means you just have to push it down. So there you go. That's all set. And just a matter now of filling it with media. Uh, I'm not going to show you that part. Uh, it wasn't really that interesting for starters. And again, uh, just a, a little bit tricky. Uh, one of the things I had to do that was different was I used uh, the poly well I used in two pieces to go around either side of it. And that was, uh, like I said, that was the only real uh, the tricky spot. And now maintenance on this also might be a bit of an issue, but that is for a different time. So here you go. I put it on one of the, like I said, one of the cleaner aquariums just to show you everything. Uh, it works fine. There's nothing I can say that's wrong with it as far as this goes. I did do a little bit of fiddling with this. I, uh, you can see the matten filter on the right there. I did pull, you'll see shortly, I'll pull the airline out of that. I did a good listen to this, and then I did a good listen to the other box filters I've made. Because I was kind of interested to see if it is quieter. And it actually is a little bit quieter. Not, you know, enough that it make a big difference. But it is a little less of that. You can see the splashing bubbles there. But I found also what I could do to get rid of that is, as you can see in the back one that I did earlier, is just put on a larger or a longer extension. And that also does the same thing. So, again, it's not really that big of an advantage. This is all about is the extra flow that came up from that last video going to be enough to make this a more efficient filter? And flow isn't the only thing, but we know the box filters work really well. I've already shown you that. So let's see if this makes the box filter even a little bit better. So there'll be lots of updates on this. Uh, they'll be coming in the future, of course. And if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and definitely leave comments on how you think this looks, uh, whether you think the effort to get the acrylic to bend is worth it, or even if, you know, I could obviously get thinner walled stuff. But anyway, just let me know what you think below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.